Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 80 Summer for Force. Today, guys, we'll be predicting with you guys the Europa League semifinals, guys. Semifinal predictions, guys. So, like I said, like this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new and comment down below your thoughts in the comment section below. And let me know your thoughts in the com comments below of the games. We're going to go ahead and start with the first game. That is on um, uh, Roma versus Bayer Leverkusen. This is a very interesting one. And this is a one I want to pay some respect. I've been kind of one of uh, Leverkusen's biggest doubters. I haven't really trusted Leverkusen. I haven't really favored them in the knockout stage so far. I think I've only backed them only against, uh, was it Ferenc Varos? I didn't back them against Monaco. I didn't back them against Union St. Galois. And they proved me wrong. Uh, Javi Lanz has done a fantastic job with this team. This team is playing some beautiful attacking football. And what I really like about this team that's really made me impressed is the fact that they haven't relied on Schick. I feel like one of the biggest problems they had last season was that they were so reliant on Patrick Schick for the goals. And what I really like about this team now is that they have different avenues for scoring goals. They have Demarabi, you know, Lucas Alario. Then you have um, Florian Wartz. You know, this Leverkusen team is well organized in the attack. I still have some concerns of defense. I think defensively, they're still very, very suspect, very vulnerable. I don't really rate, um, you know, their center backs like that. Hinsape, Radecki's made some few errors this season. And just overall, their defense looks a bit suspect, you know. That being said, their attack makes up more than for it. Because if they didn't have this sustainable attack, you know, who knows how it would be for them. So you got to give credit, credit to Javi Lonzo. He's done a fantastic job. I mean, they were literally 17th place at the beginning of the season, guys. And now... They are sixth place, and now they're in a potential possibility of securing top four in the Bundesliga, and possibly even winning the Europa League, which would be a pretty amazing start to the season, a pretty amazing turnaround. Although I don't think they'll get Champions League football in the league, I think that's a bit of a bridge too far. But certainly European football, especially Europa League, and sixth place, considering you were in 17th, is a great, great achievement. So massive, massive respect to Xavi Alonso. As for Jose Mourinho. He's done a fantastic job with this Roma team as well because this Roma team have battled it through every stage. You know, they battled it through against RB Salzburg. They, you know, they came second in the group with Real Batiste. They lost to Real Batiste at home, got a draw away, and now they vent, They lost to Salzburg first leg. Then they turned around the second leg. And then the, the game in the quarterfinals, they won the first leg against Sociedad. And now they're in the second, the second leg. They parked the bus. And then the quarterfinals, they played against Feyenoord. And they made that big, big comeback. Especially Paula Diabella coming off the bench, scoring the 89th minute winner to give Roma to port the game into extra time. And of course, we all know what happened. Roma scored two goals in added time. I like this Roma team. This Roma team is playing very well. My big, big concern, though, is that they're not consistent. I still have issues with them in scoring goals. And while their defense is generally pretty good. I think Jorge Mourinho has done a fantastic job. Their attack is not that great. I mean, you still have to rely on Belotti to score the goals, Pellegrini. The, the attack is not very good. And I'm going to say this right now, guys. This Roma team isn't that great. It's really not that good, okay? Dybella and um, Tammy Abraham have been amazing for this team. These two players have carried this team. And I feel like Dybella just brought a new dimension to this Roma team that we haven't seen before. He is that difference maker, that difference maker. Because... Tammy Abraham this season hasn't been as prolific as he was last season. He's not been the same kind of player. So this is where they've struggled to get goals. And I think Dybella's introduction to the team has helped them the goal scoring aspect. And, you know, someone you can rely upon in big games. He's back up that clutch gene in, upon him. So, talking about this match. How do I see this match going? The first leg is going to be in Rome. It's going to be in Italy. Roma have to win the first leg. If Roma do not win the first leg, I do not think they can advance. Because the second leg is in Germany. And we all know, guys, Roma is atrocious away from home. Their away form is abysmal. I'm sorry. Their away form isn't great whatsoever. I don't think they've scored a single goal away from home in the knockout stage of the Europa League. Which is pretty frightening, to say the least. You know, especially going up against the Leverkusen team that is very well, uh, th that can score a lot of goals. We know they're capable. It's going to be very interesting to see how this one pans out. Now, Mourinho has got an insane record. He's never lost a Europa League knockout home game. I think he's never lost a Europa League knockout home game in his entire managerial career, which can prove the difference here in this one. Because the thing is, guys, I think, believe it or not, I think Roma will actually have less possession. I think Leverkusen will actually dominate them in terms of possession battle, but I think Roma will have counterattacks. I think Roma will be more suited in the counterattacks, and I feel like Roma can... Um, 
can exploit that Leverkusen defense. As I said before, Leverkusen defense isn't particularly that great. And this is where I think could be very interesting, the possession battle. Roma having the less possession, Leverkusen have the most possession. How can the two, you know, counter each other out? Because we know Roma is going to do it. So, as for my prediction, guys. Um, I'm going to go with... Before I give my prediction, I actually want to look at the injuries real quick. Because that's very, very important to note. So, for Roma, the following players are injured. Kumbala is injured. Wijnaldum is injured. Diego Lorente is injured. Chris Smalling is out. Belotti is out. As for Leverkusen, Patrick Schick is out. Palacios is out. Lunev is out. Now, I, did, I forgot I meant to do the head-to-head -head record in my Champions League video. So, when we do our Champions League preview stream on Friday, I'll mention it. But I'm going to do the Europa League uh, knock and um, head to head record. It's got one win for Roma and one draw. So the last time the two teams played against her was a Champions League group stage, Group E, in which that was in 2015. Bar Leverkusen tied the home game, and of course, Roma won the home game. Four all draw, and Roma won 3 2. My prediction, guys, it's a very difficult game. It's a very, very difficult one to call because Leverkusen have everything what it takes. But I'm going to go with Roma. I just feel like it's a throw that Mourinho just knows. He just has this tacticalness set up already. And while I commend Javi Alonso for doing very well, I think this is where Javi Alonso is going to lose. I just feel like for me, the issue with this Leverkusen team is that I think he's going to get outclassed. I think he's going to get outcoached, outthought, and I feel like he's going to get um, hard done by. You know, this is going to be very close. I think Roma will just about edge it, and I think this could go down potentially to extra time, I would imagine, you know. Uh, because I could see a scenario where Roma win the first leg and the Leverkusen win. Uh, they're leading the second leg, maybe like 2-2 two, two each. Uh, then an extra time, anything can happen. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised this game goes to extra time. So like I said, I'm going to go with Roma to advance. I just feel like for me, Mourinho just knows how to get the, this job done and this kind of competition. And I think he's going to be making the Europa League final. Now we move on to the next game. The other game, the other side of the bracket we have here. It is Sevilla versus Juventus. Wow. Sevilla, man. Let's start with Sevilla, man. The Europa League heritage, man. Europa League heritage. Guys, Sevilla proved me wrong massively. They smashed United in the second leg. Say the excuses all you will. Say the injuries all you will. You know, Lissandra didn't play. Veron didn't play. And Co didn't play. It doesn't matter. Sevilla still demolished um, United. You know, and with that way they were playing in the second leg, the Ramon Sanchez, they could have scored five or six goals. They were just that great on the day. As for United, they were simply abysmal at the back, terrible defensively. Now, as much credit as I want to give Sevilla into that, is that one of a one-off game? Because the thing is, guys, is that let's keep it a stack. Those goals that Sevilla scored, most of the goals were pretty much errors from United, you know. There, there wasn't really that many goals Sevilla scored on their own merit, you know. Now, I will say that second goal was a really good goal. I think that second goal in the second leg was a spectacular goal. But the first and third goal were very preventable, you know, terrible defense. And so I'm not really sure if Juventus is going to make those kind of errors that United did, you know. And for Sevilla in particular, it's been a rocky start. This season has been a letdown. You know, you're right now battling the relegation scrap trying to survive, you're going to finish a mid-table position most likely. And obviously in the Europa League, you've done very well. You know, you defeated PSV 3-2 in aggregate, defeated uh, Ferenbacha 2-1 in aggregate, and now you defeated United 5-2 in aggregate. Uh, you know, the thing is, up until that United game is that they've been struggling. They've been struggling terribly. They haven't been great away from home, you know. And I just think that for me, the thing of Sevilla is that can't they get a draw away? Because the first leg will be at Turin. And so if Sevilla can nick a draw away from home and win the home game, because I'm telling this right now, guys, they haven't conceded a home goal. That Ramon Sanchez, it's an insane atmosphere. The atmosphere is freaking insane. So if Sevilla manages to get a draw from the first leg, don't I, I think they're going to advance the final. I genuinely think they're going to advance the final because of the fact of how menacing and how exhilarating that fortress is at the Ramon Sanchez. It's a very, very hostile atmosphere it's a very intense atmosphere and especially you know europa league at night is crazy because we all know guys sevilla is a record holders of europa league they've won it six times guys you know they just recently done a three-peat like real madrid you know so not recently but like you know the few seasons ago they, they did the three-peat right and i just think for sevilla man they're looking good you know the problem with those sevilla is that defensively they're still very bad i i still think the sevilla defense isn't great you know you have nianzu 
you know, you have good edge, not very good center backs. You know, playing C, um, CDMs as center backs is not very good. And they do have this Galatasaray guy. Um, I forgot his name. He was good. Um, I remember we played against Barcelona last season. You guys can let me know in the comments if I forgot his name. But I, I think they signed him, I'm pretty sure. And like I said, you know, they still have good fullbacks like Acuna, Montiel, you know. And for Sevilla, their attack is, you got to look out for it. Yusuf Ndaziri is someone to look out for. This guy has been scoring goals for Sevilla. He's pretty much been their only goal scorer in this competition. And then you, I know you have, like, players like Ocampos. You know, I know you have players like Rakitic that could also come and chip in the play. And obviously, I know you guys, and I know there's also Suso as well, other players in that kind of category. But for me, Ndaziri is the guy to look out for the most. He is Sevilla's best attacker. And I genuinely believe if he wasn't playing for this team or he wasn't in this insane form, I don't think Sevilla make it this far. He has been that instrumental. Then obviously you got Bono and Goal, who's an excellent shot stopper. So now that we talked about Sevilla, let's talk about Juventus. Juventus, for me, have also had a rough season. It's not been a great season. Obviously, they um, you know, have been str- they struggled in the Champions League, got out of the group stage in quite embarrassing fashion, you know, got outsted by Benfica home and away, and that's kind of embarrassing. And in the Serie A, things haven't been looking great. They haven't been able to uh, uh, contend for the title this season. And they did get their 15 points back, so at least they have that cushion. So they're likely to get Champions League football, you would imagine. And I just think for Juventus in particular, Allegri's done a good job with this team. Because say what you will, criticize Allegri all you will, criticize how terrible they are to watch. They are effective. They are results merchant. They know how to grind up the results when it's ugly. And you have to give credit to one player in particular who has been amazing for Juventus. Di Maria has been phenomenal. Ever since the World Cup, guys, this guy has been an insane form. Scoring goals for them and the crucial stages of the Europa League. I mean, look at the goals. Look at the... He single... He, he scored a hat-trick against Nantes. I know it's Nantes. I know they're not a very good team. I know they got destroyed in the French Cup final a few days ago. Still, though, to score four goals... I'm sorry, three goals away from home and that kind of stadium is crazy. And he scored against Freiburg as well. And I just think that for Juventus, man, they're looking good. They're looking great. They're looking well-organized. And their attack is looking good. You know, and that's what I like about this Juventus team is that defensively, they're very good. Their attack, though, isn't that great. You know, that's where my big problem is because I need players like Vlaovic to step up. I need players like Chiesa to step up, you know, because that's the problem with these Juventus teams is that the goals are very dry. There's not a lot of goals. You know, Juventus have just got a lot of results have been 1-0 this season. So... What is this? What is my prediction, guys? What is my prediction? So, the first leg is, of course, going to be in Turin. Juventus have to win the first leg. I would say if Juventus do not win the first leg, they're in big trouble. Because they're going to have to win away in Sevilla. And that is not a very easy task. That is a very, very difficult task, as we've seen so far in the Europa League. No team has been able to score a single goal against them in the Europa League knockout stage at their stadium. And I would even argue that Juventus have to win by two or more clear goals. Because the thing is, Sevilla is going to come out and play. Because we all know Sevilla is a possession-based team. They're going to play their tiki-taka football. They're going to play their expansive style football, playing crosses into the box, trying to score the goals. And it's just a matter of can Juventus be resilient enough in the back and contain Sevilla. That's the question mark I have for this Juventus team. It's a very difficult game to call. I could easily see both teams making the final. I think it's a very much a very close a counter, a close affair. But I'm going to back Juventus. And I am going to back Juventus. Just because of the fact that I feel like for me, Juventus, for me, is a more well-rounded unit. Whereas Sevilla, as good as they are, I think they are. They have more heritage, of course, than Juventus. I would still say Juventus have a better team than Sevilla. And I think for Sevilla, the the only reason, the, the only way they'll make the, the win this is if they're heritage. If they can, like I said, get a draw on the first leg, win the second leg at home. But for Juventus, man, they have to win the first leg. They just simply have to win the first leg because if they don't, they're in big trouble and I don't see them advancing. Before I round off, guys, I want to talk to you guys with injuries real quick. So, Sevilla, as I said, Nianzu is out. Marcao, yeah, I think Marcao is the guy I was talking about. That's the guy I was talking about. Juan Jordan and Moise Keane and Kyle Jorge. And head-to-head record, Juventus two wins, one draw, and one defeat. So, like I said, for Juventus, man... So that is it, man. So that's my Europa League final. So I'm going to have a Roma versus Juventus as my Europa League final. What an insane final that would be. And we're going to be guaranteed a Serie A club to win the Europa League. And that's going to be insane, guys. That's going to be insane. So I want to know your predictions, comments below. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments as well. If you did enjoy, smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment below your thoughts in the comment section below. Check out my other platforms in the description below. Consider becoming a member of the channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.
Peace out.